Why don't we talk instead about how Microsoft will be using AI to make AI better? Okay, that sounds really boring and sucky, but hold on. It's it actually gets good. incredibly interesting. <laughs> With microfluidic cooling channels. Microsoft is using AI to map hotspots. Do you want to click the Microsoft announcement? I sure. think they had some pictures in there. Yes. Is using AI to map hotspots in its AI accelerators individually. So that is on each unique chip. Then laser etching hair sized channels to pump coolant through them. The channels bring coolant into direct contact with the silicon. Microsoft says inside the silicon. Forbes says passing over it. Forbes is almost certainly more correct than Microsoft here. Sorry, Microsoft. <laughs> inside the silicon would break it. Both the method and the AI are from specialized Swiss startup Corintis. Microsoft has claimed a 3x improvement to cooling compared to traditional cold plates. The channels need to be deep enough to circulate coolant without clogging, but not weaken the silicon enough to break. Four design iterations were produced in just the last year, and the chips needed to be designed with a leak-proof package. What? That's wild. Dude! This is so see. cool. Yeah, I was worried about playing the video because yeah, whatever. It's from Microsoft. It should be fine. Yeah, Realistically, true. if micro for Microsoft to nuts? be like, dumb, isn't that nuts? Like, go, go back, go back to that. That was, dude, that's crazy. Look at this. That's nuts. So you ju you just plumb the coolant directly up to the pro. Are you kidding me right now? Actually, okay. Do you think we could do it ourselves? Well, not obviously. We wouldn't have the microfluid channels. Yeah. But do you think we could seal something against a board well enough to just like pump coolant into it right to the dye? Yeah. You think so? I think so. Not anywhere near. I mean, that was a render, but not anywhere near as as clean as I think they're proposing that they're going to be doing. Like, it. I don't. I don't think we'd be able to do it on a desktop socket, just because then you have the socket to contend with. But if we would, were to do it on like a framework motherboard or something like that, and just just basically like we could you know do use something. the cock, just put all the cock around the CPU. We'll need a lot of cock. A lot, a lot, and then just 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 plumb just it in there. Thick. Just lay on the cock. Yep. Just lay on it. Yep. And then, like, what, what kind of shape would we need? It would have to be like, uh, it couldn't go all the way around because you'd have to have an opening. Yeah. You'd have to have an opening, maybe a flat side. So it'd kind of be, it'd be like, uh, like the D. Somewhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, the point is, the reason that I wanted to talk about this, the reason this is like a main topic rather than, you know, like a, whatever they're called, rapid fire topic, is because I saw something really cool today, and I know it's not going to make you jealous because you're going somewhere cooler than me next week, but... Wait, what? No, I'm excited to hear it. Oh, okay. But it was very cool. So our bros over at Simon Fraser University here in beautiful British Columbia... Last time you worked with them, it was sick. How long ago do you think that video was? Six years. It was eight years ago. Whoa, that's I thought the, I was shooting relatively high. That's the face <laughs> I made. Oh my God. Because I looked it up. Because I wanted to grab a B-roll clip from the last time as I was writing the script. And I was like... <laughs> You gotta be kidding me right now. That's nuts. Yeah, the last, the last time we worked with them was eight years ago. And at that time, they were rolling out, I believe it's codenamed Cedar, Canada's fastest supercomputer. Well, guess what, baby? This time, cool things are getting furry. If you know what I'm saying. Beaver? Codename Fur. Oh. Yeah. Nice. They're named after trees. Cool. Yeah. So uh, this time around, uh, they, they just rolled out their fur supercomputing cluster and it makes cedar look like it's made of wood like it's dude cedar is like hobo garbage compared to fur it's 
amazing um there Wait, have you already seen it i was there this oh, week nice okay yeah so so the reason that i i felt it was related to this is that we haven't actually gotten many opportunities to look at liquid cooling in the data center so we did that thing with equinix a little while back but and they had some liquid cooled racks but they were inside a cage that belonged to a customer because that's equinix's business right i got to see it at ovh uh, well, but I we, didn't go there. We couldn't look at certain things too closely and stuff. I got to look at everything. Ooh. So because SFU are the actual owners of the systems, they were like, yeah, fuck it. We're going to pull a couple out of prod. And so nice. both a CPU node That's and a sick. GPU node, we got a chance to go right hands on with direct to die cooling systems. Uh, we saw the uh, we saw the liquid distribution units that go down at the end of the at the end of the aisle. Um, we like got to uh, dude, oh my god, they're beautiful. So, so the, man, they're okay. So uh, they had CPU nodes and GPU nodes as part of the cluster, and the CPU nodes are one U, okay, a hundred ninety-two cores. Yeah. Oh wait, hold on. Did I say hundred ninety-two cores? No, no, that's wrong. Sorry. One U, two nodes per U, a hundred ninety-two cores per, per node. node. Jeez. So, so these are almost four hundred cores per one U. And there isn't a single fan in them. Not one. It's just all water-cooled? The CPUs are liquid-cooled. The memory is liquid-cooled. The NIC is liquid-cooled. <laughs> the SSD bay is freaking liquid-cooled. Everything is liquid-cooled. And then the GPU, the GPU one, obviously adds the GPUs to that. So they're using chilled liquid from the outside of the building. They've got um, evaporative cooling towers. So they pull those in. Those go to their water doors. So they have the same rear doors that they had last time. Did you watch the video last time? I mean, yes. it was eight years ago. I wouldn't yeah, blame you for I mean, forgetting. I don't remember, but yes. But basically, you pull ambient air in the front of the rack. It gets superheated, essentially. Well, not superheated in like a scientific sense, but it gets heated up, okay? And then it comes out the back, and then they have, they, they force the hot air through a door that is a big radiator that has chilled liquid running through it, about yeah. 16 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And then by the time it gets crapped out into the aisle, it's just room temperature. So they don't have a traditional hot aisle, cold aisle yeah. setup. Yeah. They just have hot inside of the rack and then two cold aisles, essentially. Uh, a so, decent amount of this sounds pretty similar to OVH's setup. So they still have water doors on the back, and yeah. that just handles any waste heat from the power supply, uh, any networking that's inside the cabinet, anything like that. So they pump the primary loop right into those water doors. So that's the glycol loop that goes out to the cooling towers. Then they go from the water doors to the cooling distribution units that are or liquid distribution, LDUs, or whatever they're called. It's in the video. So those are at the end of the aisle, and then they've got a huge heat exchanger in those. And when I say huge, I mean f***ing massive. 600 kilowatts. 600,000 watts <laughs> heat exchangers in these things. It's enough to it's enough to make a man all hot and bothered. Um, and then so those have redundant pumps. What's that, Mister Daniel Besser? I, Sorry, about I need a minute. Six hundred thousand. Yeah, I know, right? How big are they? They're not that big. No, no, they're not that big. Like the size of a building or like a room? <laughs> no, no, they're just at the end of the rack. They look like a regular. How is that possible? A regular cabinet. Uh, it's just a big heat exchanger, man. I mean, that one in my in my basement. Yeah. It's only like this big. I forget. I forget how many freaking watts that thing does, but it's a lot. Like, I, 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 heat exchange is pretty nuts. Yeah, crazy. Fluid to fluid heat exchange, man. It's efficient, mm. right? Anyway, um, so six hundred thousand watt heat exchanger and then they've got redundant pumps in there and those pump the secondary loop which goes directly to the system so you don't need glycol because it's all indoors you don't actually go outside to the cooling towers okay um so that is different then oh okay is that different i believe so okay i'm yeah, uh, if I'm most, remembering everything correctly most setups would have a primary and a secondary loop and they would use heat exchangers but you know maybe no i do, mean i think ovh's all go outside do they? I think so. So just primary loop. I believe so. No secondary loop. Okay. Uh, don't don't quote us on that. And it, that might not be true of every data center. I also just might not remember correctly. That it's they've done necessarily. Um, okay. So what what was I what was I talking about next? Oh yes. Oh dude, like it's crazy. So you can. So I was actually able to like because they're SFU systems. 
There's no concerns about customer security or privacy or whatever. So we were freaking, we're freaking opening up like the heat exchanger cabinet. I'm like, oh, I wonder which side's the hot side. Put my freaking hands on them. Like, <laughs> dude, it's crazy. So the hot side's like almost 40 degrees or something like that. And so that goes into the heat exchanger. And then that goes to, I think the coolant coming out of the water doors is like, it start, starts at 16 and a half. It goes up to like 18 or 20 or something like that. Dude, and the side of these, uh, these liquid distribution units, they have like a touchscreen LCD on them that just shows like both loops and all the temperatures and pump arms. RPMs and everything. They've got all the telemetry. Ah! Ah! If only I had 82 million Canadian dollars, <laughs> then I too could have that. I wonder. Also, I'd have to have somewhere to put it. <laughs> I know a lot of schools actually do have quite a bit of money, but I wonder, like, that's a lot of money for, like, student project stuff. So I wonder oh, what they're this doing isn't like it. student projects. Research this is, stuff? Th PhD yeah, this is, this is research. Yeah. I, I would imagine they might even lease out some of this compute. I, I don't actually know that for sure. Um, but I do know that the funding came from a combination of the federal government, the provincial government, and then also in-kind discounts um, sure. from, from the providers. Yeah. So they mentioned Lenovo. Shoot, I'm going to forget who they are. They, they also mentioned the, the brand that did the cooling and the one other brand, but they all get, they're all, they're all shouted out at the end of the video. Um, it was an absolutely incredible tour though. It was my first time getting to go full nuts and bolts, hand on, That's hands really on cool. with, and like, I gotta say, man, the loop layouts in these things are like wild, like completely defy every law of efficient water cooling loop layout logic. What do you mean? How so? Like they are full of 90 degree bends. Oh, they're everywhere. And like, they've got, they've, they're using these like teeny tiny, like one eighth inch tubes inside. There's like manifolds everywhere. The whole thing doesn't look particularly balanced for flow restriction. Like, do they just have like insane pressure and don't care? Like, what? um, but, so they're taking a one eighth inch, looks like a one eighth inch tube. Maybe it's quarter inch. I don't know how thick the walls are because it's all copper. Huh. It's copper everywhere. It's beautiful. And they take oh. that one like one eighth inch, maybe one quarter inch tube. And it goes to a manifold that goes to those four GPUs, each of which is 700 watts. Oh, did I even mention the GPU nodes are one U. Have 48 CPU cores. They can actually do tool, dual CPUs. They could, you could put 192 cores in there. And then they have four H100s in oh each God. one U. Not a single fan. Not one. How much is an H100? Don't worry about it. About 30 grand. I thought it was H200. Uh, I, I don't think they're priced that differently. Oh. And these are H180 gigs, which are like oh. the better H100. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, the yeah. H200 has even more memory, if I recall correctly, but uses the same hopper architecture. Ooh. Whew. Yeah, some of these are real Whew. expensive. Uh, yeah. See, 40K for one of them, but it's from a reseller, so I have no, I have no idea what people are actually buying them for. Yeah, and uh, you know that completely ignores any in-kind discounts that you get as an educational institution or whatever. SFU wasn't able to tell me what they paid for them, so we just kind of use sure you know word Some on the street stuff pricing yeah, yeah. for them yep Whew. they did say the total budget though was 82 million canadian dollars so that's uh basically all the money in canada so did they <laughs> did they did they decommission cedar yeah they they actually i i couldn't quite tell if they were joking or not so i said no thanks i'm good but they offered to just like hand me a node and like, you know, they were like, need any SSDs? Her, her, her. I, I, I'm pretty sure they were kidding, but I didn't want to get anybody in trouble. So I sure. just, I just said no and laughed along and we didn't take anything out and they, nothing left their facility. Everything's good. Everything's chill. But I'm, I'm pretty sure they were joking, but no, it it's was just pieces of cedar were just sitting on racks. <laughs> just, I mean, it was eight years ago. What are they going to do yeah. with that? No, who's going to want an eight-year-old supercomputer? I mean, we talked about this on WAN Show. Remember when that, like, used to be a top 10 supercomputer or whatever it was, was for sale on eBay? You, you remember that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, And we, we basically, had, so many people linked it to me, and we're like, Linus, you should buy a supercomputer. And it's like, mm, not necessarily, because while the processors and maybe the memory might have some value, those platforms are basically garbage because they cost more to run than they're worth to run, which is why they're being decommissioned. Because the new stuff is so much more efficient that by the time you spend all that money on power, you're way better off just buying new stuff and powering that 
instead of running the older stuff. Uh, yeah, was it was it Cheyenne? Was that was that the one that was for sale? I forget. It was it was one of it was well it was a major supercomputer. Supercomputer. That might be the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cheyenne supercomputer sold at auction for half a million dollars. So I mean when this thing would have been purchased, it would have been a flipping fortune. This is this is loading too slow and I'm actually not that invested in it anymore.